For the last couple of months, I've been working on a definitive list of top 25 great Australian rock guitar riffs. And I'm working through a Tame Impala inclusion. I mean, Kev could fill the top five, right? But I'm thinking it's Elephant. But the more I think about it, the more intriguing this song becomes. Why do I love it so much? So I couldn't resist but try and explain things to you this week. Plus it gives you a little sneak peek into the list. But where will Elephant land? This has to be one of the greatest examples of taking something simple and classic and turning it into something new and absolutely incredible. Elephant retains all the raw appeal of its sludgy blues roots, but Old Mate has literally turned that shuffle riff on its head. Here's what's going on. Shuffle or swing, whatever you want to call it, is based on subdividing every beat of your bar into three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then omitting all the twos. So you've got one, three, one, three, one, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, uh, mm, uh, mm, 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 uh, uh. That is how it's always been. Let's set aside Jacob Collier's fives and sevens subdivisions just for a moment. <laughs> then it follows that all the accents or accented phrases are played in those same places. Think of Roadhouse Blues. Or Sinatra's That's Life. That's Life. Or Bowie. The Gene Genie. So we've basically spent our lives hearing these accents, these patterns a certain way. And then KP puts them here. So what he's doing is, instead of being one, three, one, three, one, three, one, he's going one, three, one, two, one, on the two of the group of three that no one else uses. Yeah. So a final point about those accents, as an illustration of how their placement is so unnatural and off-putting. There was a, there's a point in the last verse where rather than the bam, bam, two accents, Tammy Parler just does one. And at rehearsal, we got to that point and had to stop and go, where, where is that accent? Where does he do that? So we put on the recording and it turns out that note is on the downbeat, on beat one. It could not be simpler. On the downbeat of the first beat of the bar. Could not be simpler, but the genius of Kevin Parker is that he had three very experienced musicians scratching their heads as if we're muddling our way through Jeff Tane Watts' rendition of Brilliant Corners. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, what's he talking about? It's just a blues riff. I reckon you should get together with a couple of your mates and try and play through it, not along with the original recording. And I reckon somewhere halfway through, you're gonna be looking at each other like, what the magic is. One other thing about this that is almost unheard of in uh, pop music in this day and age is that ascending synthy line. That one is a Phrygian mode. We all hear about modes all the time and you know our favorite shredders are always talking about this mode and that mode. Not many people really grasp how they work. The way I like to think about modes is it is simply a mode meaning way, a way of playing the major scale. So our normal way from the root note to the next root note from C to C, for instance, 
is the Ionian mode. It's only one way of playing the scale. If we start on the second note of a major scale and play eight notes, that's the Dorian mode. So this is a D Phrygian, but it starts on the seven, the flat seven, the C note. So we could call it a C Dorian, but I like to think of it as a D Phrygian because the song is in D. D Phrygian is B flat. It's a B flat major scale, but it's played over a D minor. Also, let me just give a quick shout out to my boys, Miles on drums and Indy on bass. Thanks lads for helping me out on this one. And everybody stay tuned because you're gonna see more of these guys and others contributing to the best 25 rock riffs, Oz rock riffs ever within the next few weeks.